Hi, today's video will show you how to delete rows of data based on cell errors across worksheets. As we can see, some of the trade data contains error values in column J throughout the sheets. We will write a macro that will identify these rows with cell errors and delete them. Go to Visual Basic for Applications and insert a module. Inserting the option Explicit Syntax will safeguard us from incorrectly referencing the name of an existing variable and to avoid confusion in the macro where the scope of the variable is not clear. We will now narrate the macro, which will help educate macro users of the purpose of this macro. The macro will be called Delete Error Rows Sheets. Before we start composing the macro, we need to ensure these Excel properties are disabled whilst the row deletion macro is running. These Excel properties are screen updating, enable events, and calculation. Next, it is wise to declare the object variables for the macro. Declaring object variables will help to lessen the chance of runtime errors, improve readability, achieve faster code, and deliver automatic type checking. Additionally, it is wise to add an error handler. The object variables stipulate where the cursor is placed at the start of the macro. Start WKS is the starting worksheet in the active workbook. The looping code will enable the macro to cycle through all the sheets in the active workbook. Whilst this second loop will go through rows of data in each worksheet and identify error values in column J for a row of data.
The macro will continue to loop provided there is data in the corresponding column B cell of a row. The delete row variable effectively starts at the last row and moves up until it arrives at the fifth row. The var type syntax will identify whether each row's cell value in column J contains an error. If this is the case, then the macro will delete that entire row, otherwise the macro does nothing. The macro has satisfied the main objective, which is to delete rows containing error values based on the value in column J. Therefore, it can move to the next row in the respective worksheet in the active workbook via the delete row syntax. Once the macro has gone through the rows in the respective worksheet, we will move the cursor back to cell address A1. We are now ready for the macro to continue to the next worksheet, if any, in the workbook and repeat the above loops of deleting rows with error values. Once the macro is cycled through all the worksheets, we will move the cursor back to the original worksheet and starting position. The macro is complete. Don't forget to re-enable those three Excel properties that were disabled at the start of the macro. Before we run the macro, it doesn't hurt to check your code.
Let's run the macro by assigning this macro to this form control button. As we can see, the macro is correctly deleting rows containing error values in column J. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, like this post or send us a comment.